isso. I think we are live! <laughs> Honestly, I, I, Facebook gives me no warning whatsoever. <laughs> hey, good morning! Love sales, hate selling. Uh, Facebook followers, watchers, lurkers, people who are just coming, tuning in to see the wonderful Esther Coles. Good morning, Esther. Good morning. Uh, Esther, you had me worried for a minute. I, I thought, oh, oh no, she's... She, She's running late. Oh, 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 gosh. It's a woman's prerogative to get there just on time. So no, I was hoovering. <laughs> I must say, you're looking very uh, dapper today. You, are you off out nice somewhere? No, just, just for this. I've just put makeup on. I haven't worn makeup for weeks, so I thought I'd put some on. <laughs> oh, I'm honoured. I'll tell you what, if I live now, I'll put some makeup on myself. Right, boom. Before we start, Esther, we have to do a pose for the... Uh, YouTube from now. So after three, I want you to give me your best, your best pose for the okay. camera. So on, one, two, three. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. That's a cool, I tell you what, that's a really good no, pose. I, mean, I take it you've done some kind of modeling in the, in the past then. As if, yeah. <laughs> oh, that, was a, that was a really good pose. I'll tell you what, I'll send you that. It's really, really good. Right then, Esther, let's let's dive in. I know you're a busy lady. Um, so could you tell the people watching what you do for a business? So my business is Skylark First Aid. I provide first aid training for other local companies, small businesses, lots of sports clubs, because my background is sport and leisure and fitness and health. Um, I work for the RFU as well. I'm one of their first aid educators. So I go round to all the rugby clubs in the Midlands delivering the RFU's first aid as well. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I really enjoy doing that. <laughs> um, I like to work with local businesses and particularly women's businesses, not okay. exclusively, but my, my marketing, my branding is aimed at women to try and make first aid a little bit more accessible, a little bit more fluffy, if you like, um, not so clinical, not so medical, um, not so embarrassing. So we, I don't include any uh, role plays or daft scenarios or dragging people out the front of the room to make an idiot of themselves. I don't do any of that. It's all very much, we learn what we need to learn, um, but with a cup of tea in our hands. Oh, you know cool. what I mean? Um, and I think people learn more, they take more in if they're relaxed when they're training. Um, if they feel at ease and they're in their own environment because I go to people's uh, venues, then they're going to take more in and be likely to remember it if they ever need to use it. So that's what I'm all about. Oh, oh it's got a bit of feedback there. Oh, it's gone now. Oh, that's fantastic. How, how did the uh, RFU come about? I mean, you know... Uh... Are you a rugby fan? I mean, yeah, oh, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So I'm heavily involved with Dudley Kings Winford Rugby Club. Um, okay. my, my husband plays well, he used to play, he doesn't play anymore. He used to play for them, but he's now coaches the youth, one of the youth teams. My son plays for one of the youth teams, and my voluntary role is I'm their first aid and rugby safe officer. So oh, wow. I'm part of the youth committee, um, and I go down and help anything regarding first aid. So I organise all the first aiders for the youth sides. Um, and I just got involved through that really, um, appro got approached by the RFU yeah. and uh, trained to be one of their first aid educators. So I love doing that. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So you're a bit of a celeb then, I suppose. Well, you know, RFU, that's like a big organisation. It's like, oh, yeah, and, they and, are. And, 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 yeah. and do you make sure that people are aware of that when you're kind of doing your marketing? Um, I try to. Um, I, I'm not allowed to use the England rugby logo, yeah. which is difficult. So um, <laughs> I do pants about in my England rugby clothing that I get given. <laughs> Ooh, oh, I tell you what. Ooh. Hey guys, she's a bit of a celeb. This one. You want to, uh, you know, make sure you connect to her later on, and like, you know, uh, in a slipstream. <laughs> um, so you, you mentioned that you were sports, healthcare. What inspired you to, to do a, a first aid training business? So my background is, is leisure and sport. I'm a, I mean, I'm not anymore, but I used to be a trampoline coach. I'm a swimming, I've been a swimming teacher. I'm a qualified swimming teacher, which I do oh, still wow. do occasionally. Um, 
I've, I've worked mainly as a fitness instructor, as an aerobics instructor, a personal trainer. And then I moved into managing fitness. So I worked for a local authority near here for their leisure department. And I managed all the fitness classes at all of their leisure centers. So at one point, it was over 100 classes a week with 50 odd instructors at nine leisure centers. And that was my that was my baby. so I've always, that's been my background, sport and leisure and fitness. And then I went to work for the NHS and I worked, I managed a program that specifically uh, was set up. It's an exercise rehabilitation program for people who'd had heart um, and lung conditions. So it was more specialised exercise, right. like we get referrals from GPs and the hospitals. So I really enjoyed doing that. So I've always had a high level of first aid training myself. Gotcha. But equally, I've always hated first aid courses. <laughs> because I'm not being stereotypical. But <laughs> go, go, do it. Say I'm it. going to anyway. There's always been some guy teaching the course who's probably ex-police or ex-military and seems to revel in dragging people out the front to act and be and make an idiot of themselves and I literally used to crawl up my own backside because it was so embarrassing and I hated it I absolutely hated it oh when you when you said that I had this this vision flash into my mind of someone who looked like Borat uh, with shorts you know all the way up their legs hairy legs <laughs> saying right who wants to have the kiss of life <laughs> no no I know it, it's just it's not appropriate in this in this day and age yeah. um, and because also I'm an adult education tutor so I used to work uh, in my spare time of an evening and on a weekend I used to work for several local colleges and I used to deliver aerobics instructor courses and gym instructor courses so I used to teach people to be aerobics and fitness instructors so when I, I decided to leave the NHS, I thought, right, I want to work for myself. I don't want to work for anybody else anymore. What can I do? And I decided that I wanted to fill this gap that I could see in the first aid market. And because I was already an adult education tutor, I then just trained as a first aid instructor and then started my business six years ago. Ooh. So there we are. And the rest, as they say, is history. Is history. That's fantastic. I mean, wow, you've got so many corners and curves. And I suppose if you was to look at your, your journey to where you are now, like a tree, you've got all these different branches that have gone off and kind of joined back together. And yeah. It's fantastic. Mm. Um, wow. Okay. So just, just you said you was a swimming instructor as well. I still am occasionally. My, somebody, one of my friends owns a swim school, so if, if she's got a member of staff off sick or on holiday, I'll go and do a couple of hours swimming teaching with children. I love oh, it. I absolutely love it. You're bloody, you're super fit, man. So how, how far can you swim? I mean, can you like do a couple of miles? Yeah, I, the furthest I ever swam was um, five kilometres. Wow. Yeah, so that's about three and a bit miles, isn't it? But that was a long, long time ago. I love swimming, but I don't. I don't do it myself enough. I do like swimming. I like swimming in in, in like a swimming pool rather than the sea. The sea's oh, too yeah. salty. Oh yeah. Oh, I hate the sea. I hate. I couldn't swim in the sea. Like five kilometers. Good. I think I can do like maybe two lengths, and then I'm like I'm all tired. <laughs> oh, this was, to, this was two hundred lengths at the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Right. Okay. Um. So with the business, obviously you've you've had to overcome many challenges. I would imagine. Uh, tell us about some of the challenges you have had to overcome to kind of move forward with the business um one of my biggest challenges is the existing national first aid companies of which the most famous that everybody knows is st john ambulance I know them. <laughs> and they are a challenge um because <laughs> they they corner the market and it's not fair because they they don't offer regulated qualifications So if your insurance stipulates that you need a regulated qualification that sits on the national qualifications framework and is regulated by Ofqual, which is the government department for regulating qualifications, St John aren't, and people don't realise this. But 
this is where someone like yourself educates the market as to yes. why that is important. Yes. Um, because that's the first time I've heard of that. I thought first yeah. aid training was first aid training was first aid training. Yeah. Now you're saying to me, oh, there's these different, if you haven't been um, trained to this level, then you, 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 you ain't that qualified really. You're not that well, it, 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 I don't want to mislead people. A course, if you do an emergency first aid at work, which is the one day course with me, if you do it with St. John, it's exactly the same course. The content yeah, is the same. Yeah. And the HSE, which is the health and safety executive, accepts St. John qualifications. That's absolutely fine. So I'm not saying you can't yeah, do yeah, them. And yeah, if you yeah. do one of their courses, I'm not saying you won't be qualified. Yeah, you yeah. will. It's just oh. the regulation. It's the regulated status, yeah, whether yeah. you need that or not. Got you. So St. John is so famous and so historical that everybody thinks that they are the be all and end all and yeah. they're not. There yeah. is a choice. Yeah. Yeah. And I get really annoyed when companies say to me, when I approach them to see if we want, they want to work with me, when they say, oh, we, we have to do St. John. It's the biggest <laughs> load of rubbish <laughs> I've ever heard in my life. And it, and I, just, yes. I feel like banging my head. <laughs> I, I, I think, you know, okay, I suppose it's like you um, bringing out uh, Esther Cole's cola and trying to go up against Coca-Cola. Mm. They're, you know, a big, fat, yes. smelly old brand. You know, you're never going to be able to take them on head on. No. But most certainly where they're big and cumbersome, you are small and agile. Which means that you can, and this is what I mean. If you if you educate people as to, okay, you know, yes, you can use them, you can use me. These are the regulations that need to be stipulated. Ensure as a company that these are what you're yeah, what you're getting. You and, and, and that's all you need to do. You don't need to talk about them or yeah. anything else. What what you're allowing people to do then is to do that comparison of okay, this company offering this, but these guys offer this, which is linked yeah. to this government body. Oh, okay. Mm. It's quite strange, actually, that they're able to offer the first day training without being part of that regulatory. But they they just use their, their name is enough. Well, it's a big big fat smelly brand, which is it? fine yeah. and it's true. It's it's great. Um, you know that's absolutely fine. But you see, with them, uh, they they charge about quadruple my charges. Yeah. You heard that, people? If you have a business and you need some first day training, if you want to save some money this year. There's, there's no honestly else that you I, can go. I was doing a quote yesterday for somebody and um she asked me for a first aid at work course yeah which is um the three day big the big course yeah, yeah. and i was i just thought oh i wonder and i looked at st john and for one person to go on and you've got to go to their venue at their their stipulated time it's 378 pounds Boom. Now, I come to your venue at a time to suit you. I'd come in the middle of the night if you wanted me to. Um, and I, if I had a full, a full course of 12 people, which is the maximum I'm allowed to have, I would be charging £128 a person Good as God, opposed to the 378 And I still make a decent profit on that. But that also tells me that there might be a little bit of a price increase that you could implement and still be competitive <laughs> I, I think at the minute I'm, I'm i'm a fair price considering yeah. i'm flexible with my times I, yeah. I can break courses up into chunks as well right. so we can do a bit here a bit there to fit in with people's working daily life yeah. and that's what the bigger companies can't do they yeah. can't be as flexible as Absolutely. me you're small you're agile you can yeah. move quickly you can yeah. adapt and, and that's and that's a good thing and, and and those are the the points to get across to get across to these, these organizations who are just going down the same old boring old route mm. you know there is an alternative uh, we've had a few comments coming let me uh, let me see what let me see what people are saying hey natasha gordon how you doing uh hi maria um oh they're, they're having a, a private conversation between themselves hey oh, Natasha, i don't forget about you i still have to reach out to you it's all right just use just use my video to like talk to you <laughs> <laughs> it's fine I don't at least care. they're there hey at least you're communicating that's that's all nice <laughs> right my favorite question oh okay esther you told us so much about you well, I want you to tell us one thing about you that not many people know. 
Nothing that's going to, like, you know, cause any fractions at home. Get me arrested. <laughs> or get you arrested. Yeah. Go on. Um, I don't, oh, it's hard, really, isn't it? I've got lots of pet reptiles. I'm a bit of a reptile fan. Oh, what's the scariest one that you've got? Oh, they're not scary. They're, they're, I've got a pet tortoise. Okay. That's a, who's that's, that's... And really, she's about 100 years old. She's oh, really old. She's, I've got a she's turtle. In... Have you? Yeah. Oh. It's growing at an alarming rate of... Yeah. Uh, basically, we had, we had two and one died. Oh. And then since the other one died, the other one's gone, hey, she's my domain. And it's actually <laughs> just... It's got hands as big as me now. I actually reckon on an evening, it comes out of the tank and goes and raids the fridge. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> wet, wet patches across the floor, seriously. <laughs> Delbert's name is Delbert the turtle. Delbert. <laughs> oh. My tortoise is called Nosey because she is... <laughs> So what, what other reptiles have you got? I've got two leopard geckos as well. And we, we've just had a new one and it's a baby. And Lizards. it's absolutely tiny. They're adorable. Yeah, they're, they're really lovely. They're and my, my daughter has called it Pickle. Pickle? Pickle. It's a cute name, but I'm just not sure that, you know, I'd like to come face to face with it on a dark night. Oh, it's only, it's only like this. this big. But they grow. Have you never seen a Komodo yeah, dragon? Any, <laughs> no, they're any, they're any like that. So yes, I'm a I'm a bit of a reptile fan, so oh, that's okay. Yeah, I'd have hundreds if my husband had let me breed go bananas. He really would. He, he, he doesn't share your love of, no. of reptiles. He doesn't mind. <laughs> he puts up with it, but he's not. You know, I'd have a whole menagerie of animals if I could. Uh, oh, uh, honestly, your your use of English. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna drop you in it now <laughs> because Esther did a letter uh, recently to the education secretary. And quite rightly so, she was questioning why kids of how old? Eight, nine? Nine, my daughter is, yeah. yeah. We're having to learn words that even I didn't even know what she was talking about. Just give us an example of one of the, the, the subjects that you mentioned. So it was English specifically after doing all this homeschooling about the processes and the techniques that children have to learn, such as subordinate clauses. So <laughs> Conjunctions. <laughs> um, what, subordinate clauses. That's something to do with like getting planning permission. <laughs> it, it's constructing a sentence, basically. Oh. Yeah. Oh. They were, they were, say constructing a sentence. Oh, uh, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, it's just absolutely ridiculous. And I just, um, one morning, <laughs> lost my temper <laughs> <laughs> and got on my soapbox and wrote the letter and. Um, <laughs> Honestly, guys, if you uh, and are then I'll put friends, it on Facebook. If you're friends with Esther, or if you're not friends, go and connect with her. Go and read the letter that she sent. It is um, amazing. There's words in there that you won't understand, and, and basically, like Esther just said, you know, subordinate clauses means doing a sentence. So instead of saying I, um, I like this. No. I'm quite sure the education secretary doesn't understand half of it. Well, I think it's, I think that, you know, all this theory behind actually doing it, um, do you teach people how to speak or do you teach them the process of how to speak? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well, hey, what do I know? I, I got two C's in English. Um, it's, I've got this far. Exactly. And, you know, life, life is good. Exactly. Um, so... Oh, it's okay, Marie. I don't mind you having a conversation. I'm only joking. And hi, Natalie. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. Um, so, six years running your business. Yeah. Highs and lows. Yeah. Um, what what three bits of advice would you give somebody who was crazy enough <laughs> to want to start a business right now, 2021? Okay. Um, not to go into first aid training. <laughs> <laughs> Competitiveness, no. that is. <laughs> but it's, it, it, I wouldn't do it now. Oh. I wouldn't, oh. Somebody asked me a while ago, oh, I'm thinking of becoming a first aid instructor. I said, don't. It, it's compared to six years ago, the market is hugely crowded now. Um, and I wouldn't I wouldn't do it if it, I was starting oh, out now. I don't know, you know. I, I think you're missing a bit of a trick. Um, because if you think about what you've said is the stereotypical first aid training, Think of who you are. Mm. You are anti-stereotypical in every shape and form. So I actually think that you could carve a niche in the market based on you and what you bring, which is different. Mm. Crowded markets are great because it means that the business is wanted. Yeah. You're worried if there's only you and the one other because like, well, yeah. no one wants this service. 
But I would actually use your power, because you have that power, um, to separate yourself from everybody else and you know make sure that you stand on who you are, what you stand mm-hmm. for, your values, the fact that it's fun, it's informative, you're flexible, it's bespoke, the prices are good. Um, honestly, I, I wouldn't even see that as a, as, a, as a competition. Yeah, I think if people have got a niche and they've already got a customer base, then that's fine. But um, for somebody just generally getting into it, Started, it yeah, it's you difficult. Yeah, yeah. I think I'd advise people to do their research. I I knew absolutely nothing about running a business because I'd always been an employee. I'd yes. worked for the council, yeah. a government employee. So I'd worked for the council and the NHS. So I knew nothing about running a business. And thinking back, I can remember spending weeks upon weeks upon weeks sat where I am now at my kitchen table, just doing planning and setting things up and working things out and i didn't get paid for that no so i think running a business you underestimate the amount of time that you don't get paid i'm only paid when i am actually standing in front of a group of people delivering first aid that's when the money comes in yeah but the amount of additional time that i sit at my desk upstairs or here doing admin finances yeah. you know yes i do i do farm some stuff out yeah. but not a massive amount because i do actually enjoy doing my finances which is a bit weird um i know what you're saying there i, I like but I, and, and i don't really earn enough to warrant bringing in an accountant yeah. um anyway i i you don't get paid for all that no no and this is why one of the things that i say to a lot of people um who are self-employed is your minimum hourly rate before you even get out of bed and put your slippers on, has to be fifty pounds an hour mm. because it's not about oh well people won't use me. It's about well you've got insurance to pay, you've got yeah. travelling expenses, you've got the, the expenses of running the business, the admin. If you have got an accountant, there's forty or fifty yeah. pound a month that's going out every single month. Mm-hmm. So you've got to make sure you're getting paid. And some people will be sitting there going, oh look at him, he's telling everyone to be expensive. No, I'm not. I'm saying that if you're self-employed, you need to make sure that you are covered because mm-hmm. you won't be working eight hours a day. Yeah. You won't work two hours a day. You yeah. might only work three hours a week. Yeah. But then that other 30 odd hours you're putting into your business, like you say, Esther, it's admin, it's this, it's pushing yeah. paper around the desk, it's chasing things up, it's doing you know, insurance. Ah! Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. 50 pounds an hour, people, as a minimum, if you are running your own business. Don't get me wrong. If you want to be flexible with some customers, you can. It's your business. Do what you like. But, you know, make sure you're earning what you're worth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm sure you gave me two tips there. I know. think I've got one more. Oh. The other one is um, networking. Ah. I didn't start networking until I was oh, two years in, I think. Yeah. And if you look, you will find some lovely local free networking groups. You don't have to pay yeah. the, the BNI, 4N, the Bob Clubs, you know, which are great. But you, you've got to find the network groups that work for you and yeah, work for right. your business. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't really until I started networking that I don't just mean business rolled in. It was more of a support mechanism and yeah, finding yeah. things out. Like yeah, yeah. like this week, you've given me some fab- fantastic advice that I'm going to follow up on yeah, um, yeah. regarding my website. Well, yeah, I already yeah. have. I've started acting on the <laughs> things. Hey, does, your, does your web developer hate me yet? <laughs> no, not yet. I didn't tell him your name. <laughs> oh, I, I got a strange email last night. I'm joking. <laughs> but it, it's things like that, and that wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't be improving my website and potentially bringing more business in if I hadn't met you it's a networking Absolutely. and, and it, you know when i think of customers i think well where did they come from how have yeah. they found me yeah. and it yeah. goes back and back and back yeah. and back and back and back and yeah. it, you find out oh it was somebody i met at networking yeah. and, and and the key thing there and i'm gonna i'm gonna do a bit of a sales pitch here because one of the things i mean i've i've brought out a course called um, love sales excel in the clash course and it, it it is based around you becoming your own funnel because you think about it you go networking now you're prepared when you go networking. You know you've got your business name, you've got your website, you've got your um, you've got your end goals. So someone can easily go and check you out and say, "Oh, this is the coach." She's blah, 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 blah. a lot of people haven't got that. They haven't got that set up. So they go networking, and whereas you've had a good return from it because people have been able to check you out and then say, "Well, I want you to speak to this." 
other people don't sometimes have those online assets set up yeah so you know if you're if you're set up right yeah networking can really really work for you and, and like you said i mean we met at alison cotton's all for one which i think is a fabulous networking event and she's been running it now yeah. i can't remember how long she's but i love it it's a great group and she brings some great people in and i remember mm-hmm. you giving a talk there and it was like yeah. oh, esther coles is amazing um so yeah it's all about opportunity isn't it <laughs> it's all about opportunity yeah um yeah and it- on, and it, it makes you feel less lonely as well you know working on your own you're less lonely because you're seeing people and you've got a reason to go out and meet people and get that support mechanism yeah. really i think during covid this has been a godsend yes for so many people um, yeah. being able to jump on and it's been a new thing for a lot of people as well and, yeah and it's taken a bit of getting used to but uh ah it's so cool um is there anything that the group the, the, the people watching can help you with right now in the future um referrals, referrals. <laughs> um, i i get a lot of my business through word of mouth and recommendation and as i said earlier i want to help businesses i can save businesses money i can save them time i can save them hassle because i understand that it's, it's organizing first aid is a pain in the ass and i can <laughs> i can i can help you know it is first aid is it mandatory to have a first aid qualified person in your business? If you've got over five members of staff, but that's ah. not set in stone. There are lots of ifs and buts. So ah. if you have mem- if you see members of the public, so if, for example, you were a personal trainer or um, some kind of coach or a mentor, and you see somebody face to face one to one, I would argue that it's important for you to be first aid trained because what if that person becomes ill while they're with you? They're your responsibility, aren't they? That would be absolutely terrifying if that happened. Exactly. So even though by the law, if you're in a premises, so for example, a hair, salon and if the the law says if there are more than five of you working you need a first aider but again i would argue you've got members of the public in that salon that could have any medical condition known to man and what happens if they become ill while they're with you so there's always a responsibility for everybody and anybody to do first aid training and i think it makes people's businesses look better because you can say I'm first aid trained. I've got that qualification. You are safe with me. I just had a cunning plan for oh. in my mind. This plan is so cunning, you could pin a tail on it and call it a fox. Okay, Baldrick. <laughs> ah, you see, I love it. I said something soon. Honestly, anyone who knows Black Adder, oh. that, you're hey, just a bit. Tell you what. We're best of friends. We? <laughs> we're going we're gonna to have a little talk after this. I just had, I just had, a, I just had a brainwave. Um, people, thank you so much for joining me and Esther today. It's been absolutely blessed um, to be have this, you know, be able to talk to you and find out a lot, a lot, 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 lot more about you. <laughs> God, you've got so many corners. Um, if anyone's got any questions for Esther, Esther's going to go um, when we finish. She's going to drop all of her links in the comments, so a link to her website, a link to her first aid courses, um, anything. That to do with her business and her she's going to drop them in so if you want to connect with her please connect with her if you are in a business and you are worried about the lack of first aid in your business then speak to your boss man tell him to get esther involved she can come in she can save you money she can get you all trained so you can save lives uh, which i think is really really important so people have a fantastic day and i shall see you all next tuesday i can't remember who else ah next tuesday we have rohini in the morning being interviewed um and shari reinhardt at half past five so i'm doing two next tuesday um because shari's in canada so oh god you're so efficient i'll tell you what you you've dropped it in the wrong one though you dropped it in this oh. chat you gotta put it in the facebook <laughs> um. <laughs> sorry i didn't explain that very well I'll, right, guys, I'll, do, I'll do that in a bit esther don't go anywhere guys okay. we'll see you later uh, take care have a fantastic rest of the week bye